Hello friends, welcome to a lecture series on multivariable calculus. So today uh, we will deal with partial derivatives. So what do you mean by partial derivatives and how we can uh, use uh, this uh, some solving some problems let us see. So we start with one variable problems, function of one variable. We know that if you have function of one variable say y equals to fx where x belongs to r say then if function is differentiable at a point say x equal to a then we say that dy by dx at x equals to a or is equals to f dash a is equal to limit h tending to 0 f a plus h minus f a upon h. So, this is how we define derivative of a function at a point say x equal to a. It is simply limit s n to 0 f a plus h minus f a upon h. Now, what does it mean? What, what, uh, what does it give derivative? It simply gives slope of a tangent at a point x equal to a. If we have a curve x uh, y equals to f x, then at x equal to a it simply gives slope of the tangent. Okay. It also represent rate of change of uh, f along x axis, rate at which the function changes along x axis. So, this we have already deal with, uh, we have already seen what do we, what do we mean by function of uh, derivative of function of single variables. Now, in multivariable we have more than one independent variables. So, we cannot define derivative like this. Okay. So, we, here we have function of uh, variables more than one. So, what we have here? Here we have a concept of partial derivatives. So, what do you mean by partial derivative? Let us see. Suppose, suppose we have a function of x and y, two variable function. Here x and y are independent variables and z is a dependent variable. Now, we define del f upon del x. It is simply partial derivative of f with respect to x, say at x equal to a. So, what does it mean? It is partial derivative of f with respect to x at x equal to a. Okay. Now, here when we deal with partial derivative of f with respect to x that means we are treating all other variables constant. Okay. So, we define this as limit h tending to 0 f of a plus h. Okay. We are defining partial derivative say at a point uh, a comma b. Okay. So, at, at a comma b because here we are having two variables a and b I mean x and y. So, it is limit h into 0 f of a plus h b minus f a b upon h. So, this is partial derivative of f with respect to x at a comma b. So, simply we are changing only in x component y will remain same that means we are fixing y and changing only with respect to x. Now, what does it what does it give? It simply gives it simply gives rate of change of f along x axis or rate of change of f along i cap direction. Okay. Or we can define it like this z equal to f x y is a surface z equal to f x y is some surface. Okay. Now, y equal to b is a plane which cuts the surface into a curve. Okay. Now, the slope of the tangent, slope of the tangent for this curve z equals to f x b because y is equals to b at the point a b f a b in the plane y equals to b. So, it simply gives slope of the tangent for the curve this at a point this in the plane y equal to b because z equal to f x y is a surface 
when y equal to b cuts it, it will give a curve. Okay. And the point is this, at this point the partial derivative of f is back to x simply gives slope of the tangent of this curve in the plane this. Okay. So, this is how we can define del f upon del x or partial derivative of f with respect to x geometrically. Similarly, when we talk about partial derivative of f with respect to y, so with respect to y how can we define? Now, del f upon del y at a comma b which is partial derivative partial derivative of f with respect to variable y at a comma b is simply limit s tending to 0 f of a b plus h minus f a b upon h. Now, here when we are differentiating partially f with respect to y we are differentiating only with respect to y keeping all other variables constant. So, here a is constant we are fixing a we are changing only in the y component b plus h to b upon h. So, this is how we can define rate of we can define partial derivative of f with respect to y. Again geometrically if we are talking about partial derivative of f with respect to y it simply gives rate of change of f along y axis or rate of change of f along j cap direction or, or z equals to f x y is a surface and x equal to a is a plane. When x equal to a cuts this surface it will give a curve, which curve? It will give this curve okay. and the slope of the tangent for this curve at a point p in the in the plane x equal to a will represent del f upon del y at a comma b. Okay. So, this is how we can define first order partial derivative of two variable functions with respect to x and y. Now, we will see some problems based on this let us see the first problem is it is f equal to 3 x cube plus 4 x square y square minus 6 y cube. Now, suppose you want to find del f upon del x at any point x comma y. So, del f upon del x is simply partial derivative of f respect to x. That means, you have to simply differentiate this function respect to x keeping all other variables constant. So, so derivative of this respect to x is simply 9 x square plus you have to keep y constant. Okay. Then this is 8 x y square minus 0 because we are treating this as a constant. So, this is this is x times 9 x plus 8 y square. Okay. So, this is del f upon del x. Now, similarly when if you want to find out del f upon del y it is nothing but now you have to differentiate f respect to y partially that means you have to take x as a constant. Okay. So, this is 0 and this is this is 8 x square y minus it is 18 y square. So, this is del f upon del y. Now, del f upon del x is sometimes also represented as f x, f x means del f upon del x. Now, del f upon del y is also represented as f y. Okay. Now, the second problem, the next problem, now f is 10 inverse y upon x. Okay. Now, what is f x? What is f x? 
f x simply means del f upon del x. Okay. Now, if you want to compute this, it is 10 inverse something t, 10 inverse t is derivative of 10 inverse t is 1 upon 1 plus t square and then del by del x of t which is y upon x. Okay. This is simply equal to x square upon x square plus y square into. Now, partial derivative of this respect to x is you have to take y as a constant, it is minus y upon x square because 1 upon x is minus 1 upon x square, derivative of 1 upon x is minus 1 upon x square. So, it is minus y upon x square plus y square. So, this is del f upon del x. Now, del f upon del y is del f upon del y is f y which is equals to again 10 inverse t it is 1 upon 1 plus t square and then del by del y of t again. Okay. And it is equals to x square upon x square plus y square. Now, del upon del y of y upon x is simply 1 upon x okay. and this is nothing but x upon x square plus y square. So, this is how we can find out del f upon del x or del f upon del y for some uh, function of two variables. Okay. Now, let us solve second problem find z x and z y if the equation this defines z as a function of two independent variables x and y. So, what is the function? Now, the function is equation is x square plus y square plus z square plus 6 x y z equal to 1. And here z is a function of x and y, x and y are independent variables and z depends on x or y, x and y. Now, how can we compute z x, how we can compute z x and z y, this we have to find out. Now, we simply differentiate partially with respect to x, so differentiate partially say this equation is equation 1, equation 1 with respect to x. Okay. So, what we will obtain? You see x square is 2 x when you differentiate partial respect to x, y square is because x and y are independent. Since x and y are independent, so partial derivative of y respect to x will be 0. Now, z is a function which depends x on x and y. Okay. So, partial derivative of z respect to x will not be 0, it is t square means 2t that is 2z into del z upon del x okay, plus 6 times. Now, when we differentiate partial respect to x, we will take y as constant because y is independent of x. So, we can take y also common. Now, inside bracket we are having x and z and both are the function of x. So, we have to apply product rule that is first as it is derivative of second that is del z upon del x plus second as it is derivative of first and derivative of 1 will be 0 with respect to x. Okay. So, what we will obtain from here? Now, let us collect del z upon del x. This implies del z upon del x. Let us collect uh, these terms 2 z plus 6 x y which is equal to the remaining terms put it on the right hand side 
it is minus 2 x and it is minus 6 y z. Okay. So, what we are having this implies z x is equals to you can cancel 2 from both the sides. So, it is minus of x plus 3 y z upon z plus 3 x y. So, this is del z upon del x. Now, now if you want to find out del z upon del y, so similarly we can proceed for del z upon del y. Now again differentiate partially equation 1 with respect to y. So, what we will obtain? Now, x is independent of y. So, partial derivative of f uh, x with respect to y will be 0. So, this is 0 plus y square the derivative partial derivative of y with respect to y is 2 y. Of course, del y upon del y is 1 plus 2 z into del z upon del y because z is a function of x and y, z depends on y okay. plus now 6 x you can take common now y into z and both are the function of y. So, you have to apply product rule here. So, it is y into first as it is derivative of second it is del z upon del y plus z into 1 which is equal to 0. So, this implies now collect terms of del z upon del y which is 2 z plus 6 x y equal to put all the remaining terms on the right hand side that is minus 2 y minus 6 x z okay. cancel 2 from both the sides again. So, this implies z y will be equals to minus y plus 3 x z upon z plus x y 3 x y. So, this is del z upon del y. So, that is how if some implicit equations are given to us, we can easily compute del z upon del x or del z upon del y if z is a function of x and y. Now, we will solve some more problems where f is a function of 3 variables here. Okay. The same definition will applicable for 3 variables also. If we have function of 3 variables, suppose you want to compute, suppose, suppose you are having uh, w is equals to f x y z. Now, here, here x y z are independent variables and w is a dependent variable. Okay. Now, if you want to compute del w by del x or or we can say del f upon del x or we can say w x. Okay. So, so this is simply means this simply means we are treating x as a variable all other variables as constant. Okay. Suppose, you want to define del f upon del x at some point say a b c. So, how can I define this? It is limit h tending to 0 f of a plus h b c minus f a b c upon h. The same definition which we have used in for two variable functions. The same will be followed for three variables or more than three variables. Okay. Similarly, we can define del f upon del y or del f upon del z. Now, we will solve some problems based on this. Now, suppose f is f of x y z is the first problem it is ln x plus 3 y plus 6 z. So, what will be f x? f x is del f upon del x okay. and it is it is log t log t is derivative of log t is 1 upon t that is 1 upon t is x plus 3 y plus 6 z 
and then del upon del x of t again. This is equals to 1 upon x plus 3 y plus 6 z. Because y and z are independent of x. So, derivative partial derivative of y or z with respect to x will be 0. Now, similarly, f y will be again 1 upon t that is 1 upon x plus 3 y uh, plus 6 z into del by del y of x plus 3 y plus 6 z which is 3 upon x plus 3 y plus 6 z. Similarly, if you want to compute f z, it is again log t derivative of log t is 1 upon t, it is 1 upon 1 1 upon x plus 3 y plus 6 z into del by del z of x plus 3 y plus 6 z which is 6 upon x plus 3 y plus 6 z. Okay. So, this is how we can find out del f upon del x, del f upon del y or del f upon del z. Let us try one more problem based on this. So, things will be more clear. So, it is uh, x square plus y square plus z square whole is to power minus 1 by 2. So, f x will be now it is t raised to power minus 1 by 2 that will be derivative of that will be minus 1 by 2 t which is x square plus y square plus z square and t minus 1 and del by del x of t again that is x square plus y square plus z square which is equal to which is equal to it is uh, minus 2 x upon 2 a derivative of this is 2 x and it is x square plus y square plus z square whole raised to power minus 3 by 2 which is minus x into x square plus y square plus z square whole raised to power minus 3 by 2. Uh, similarly, if you find del f upon del y, it is again minus 1 by 2 x square plus y square plus z square whole raised to power minus 1 by 2 and del by del y of uh, this term which is 2 y because x and z are independent of y. So, 2 2 cancel out and it is minus y into x square okay, minus 1 again. So, it is x square plus y square plus z square and whole is to power minus 3 by 2. Okay. And similarly, f z will be minus z x square plus y square plus z square whole is to power minus 3 by 2. So, this is how we can compute f x, f y or f z. Now, suppose f x, y, z is sin hyperbolic x y minus z square. What is sin hyperbolic uh, theta? Sin hyperbolic theta is a raise to power theta minus a raise to power minus theta upon 2 and cos hyperbolic theta is a raise to power theta plus a raise to power minus theta upon 2. Okay. So, we can easily see that uh, d by d theta of sin hyperbolic theta is cos hyperbolic theta that we can easily see. If we differentiate this respect to theta, it is e raise to power theta, it will become plus e raise to minus theta upon 2 which is cos hyperbolic theta okay, that we can easily see. So, if we take f x which is del f upon del x, now sin hyperbolic theta is cos hyperbolic theta the derivative of the derivative of sin hyperbolic theta is cos hyperbolic theta and del by del x of theta again it is x y minus z square which is which is y into cos hyperbolic x y minus z square 
okay. Now, F y is similarly it is cos hyperbolic x y minus z square into del by del y of x y minus z square which is again x times cos hyperbolic x y minus z square and f z will be cos hyperbolic x y minus z square into del by del z of x y minus z square and derivative of this term with respect to z partially this will be 0. So, and this will be minus 2 z times cos hyperbolic x y minus z square. So, this is how we can compute f x f y or f z. So, these are some simple illustrations. Now, what is the relation between continuity and partial derivatives? We have already seen what do you mean by continuity of several variable functions and we have also seen partial derivative of several variable functions. Now, in single variable function, if a function is differentiable at a point, so this implies function will be continuous at that point. We already know this result that if a function is of single variable and function is differentiable at a point, so this implies function is continuous at a point. If a function is continuous at a point, then the function may or may not be differentiable at that point. Okay. Now, what, what is the result in multivariable function? Let us see. So, if a function f x y is continuous, if a function f x y is continuous okay, at a point say p, then the partial derivative f x and f y at p may or may not exist. Also, if f x and f y exist at a point, then the function f x y need not be continuous at a point. So, if a function partial derivative of a function f x and f y exists at a point, then it also does not ensure that a function is continuous at that point. Okay. In single variable function, differentiability implies continuity. In several variable function, if the function uh, is a partial derivative exists at a point, it does not mean that a function is also continuous at that point. How we can say this? So, we have counter examples. Let us see. The first example, for example, is f x y is equals to it is x plus y sin of 1 upon x plus y, x plus y should not equal to 0 and 0 when x plus y is equal to 0. Now, first we will see if a function is continuous at a point, then its partial derivative does not exist at that point. This is an example which is continuous at a point 0 comma 0, but partial derivative f x and f y does not exist at that point. So, for continuity what we have to show? If, the, we, if we are saying that this function is continuous at origin, so what we have to prove? We have to prove that limit x y tending to 0 0 f x y should be equals to f 0 0 or this means limit x y tending to 0 0 here f x y is x plus y sin 1 upon x plus y is equals to f 0 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0 means 0. So, this we have to show. If we are saying that a function is continuous at a point 0 comma 0 or origin, this means we have to prove this equation. Okay. Now, in order to prove this, we have to use delta epsilon definition. The only option is using delta epsilon definition. So, we will take again let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Now, take mod of x plus y sin 1 upon x plus y minus 0 f x y minus l. This is equal to mod of x plus y into mod of sin 1 upon x plus y. Okay. 
Now, sin theta its mod is always less than equal to 1 for any theta. So, this will be less than equals to mod x plus y into 1 and this is less than equals to mod x plus mod y. Mod a plus b is always less than equals to mod a plus mod b and if you take it less than delta plus delta. So, if you choose 2 delta is equal to epsilon then mod of x plus y into sin of 1 upon x plus y minus 0 is less than epsilon whenever whenever 0 less than mod x delta less than delta and 0 less than mod y less than delta. So, uh, we have shown the existence of such delta for every epsilon greater than 0 for which this inequality hold hence we can say that the limit of this function is 0 or, or this equation holds. Okay. This means function is continuous at origin. Okay. So, hence we can say that this function is continuous. Now, we have to find out its first order partial derivatives. Now, since function we cannot find its partial derivative as such, we have to use the definition of limit okay. uh, because, because we have the function in the split form 0 at 0 0 function uh, has different value I mean 0 value. So, we have to use uh, f x at 0 0 we have to use definition of limit limit h tending to 0 f of 0 plus h 0 minus f 0 0 upon h okay. by the by the definition of partial derivative of f respect to x. Now, this is limit h tending to 0 Now, f at h comma 0 we will use this thing which is h h plus 0 is h into sin 1 upon h minus f 0 0 is 0 upon h h s cancels out. So, this is limit h into 0 sin 1 by h and this is does not exist because it is uh, it is not a finite value it I mean it is not a unique value it lying between minus 1 and plus 1, but it is not unique. So, limit does not exist. Similarly, if you if you find f y at 0 comma 0, so it is limit as tending to 0 f of 0 comma 0 plus h minus f 0 0 upon h which is again limit s n to 0. Now, f 0 comma h so you, so you replace y by h and x by 0. So, it is again h sin 1 by h minus f 0 0 is 0 upon h h s cancels out and it is again limit h into 0 sin 1 by h which is does not exist. So, by this example we have seen that if a function is continuous at a point it does not mean that the first order partial derivative exists at that point. Okay. Now, another example now using this example you see that show that a function this is not continuous at origin, but is partial derivative f x and f y exist at origin. Okay. So, first we will prove this. So, it is x is to power 4 y or it is x square sorry x square uh, y upon x is to power 4 plus y square when x y is not equal to 0 0 and it is 0 when x y are 0 comma 0. Now, first we have to show that this function is not continuous at origin. Okay. 
So, let us find this limit first, limit x y tending to 0 0, function is x square y upon x raised to power 4 plus y square. Now, <coughs> to uh, prove that this limit does not exist, we have to show that it is path dependent that is from two different paths if we have shown that the uh, value of the limits are different this means limit does not exist. Now, let us move along say along say x equal to 0 that means an along y axis. If you move along y axis then you simply substitute x equal to 0 here which is value is 0. So, it is equal to 0. Okay. If you put y equal, uh, x equal to 0, so the value is simply 0. Now, you move along say, say y equal to x square. Now, if you move along y equal to x square, so this will be limit x tending to 0, it is x square into x square upon x raised to power 4 plus x raised to power 4 which is equal to limit x tending to 0 x raise to power 4 upon 2 x raise to power 4 which is 1 by 2. So, we have so from this path from this path value is 0 and from this path value is 1 by 2 that is from two different paths values are different. This means this means that this limit does not exist. And this implies f x y is discontinuous at origin. Okay. Now, let us try to uh, prove that its first order partial derivative exists. Okay. So, let us find f x at 0 comma 0. Again, we will use the definition of limit it is limit s tending to 0 f of 0 plus h comma 0 minus f 0 0 upon h which is limit s tending to 0. Now, when you put h comma 0 here x is h y is 0 at x is h y is 0. So, simply this value will be 0. So, it is 0 minus 0 f 0 0 is 0 upon h which is 0. Now, again when you compute f y at 0 comma 0 it is limit s tend to 0 f of 0 comma 0 plus h minus f 0 0 upon h which is again equal to limit s tending to 0 it is 0 comma h you replace x by 0 y by h x by 0 y by h. So, this value will be 0 0 minus 0 upon h it is again 0. Okay. So, f x and f y exist at origin which is 0 value is 0, but we have seen that this function is not continuous at origin. So, existence of partial derivative at a point does not guarantee that a function is continuous at that point also for several variable functions. So, what is the addi additional condition required? When we can say that beside existing of partial derivative, what are, what are the additional condition which function must have? So, that we can say that the function is continuous at that point also. So, that condition is basically if the partial derivative f x and f y of f x y exist and are continuous also throughout a disk centered at a comma b then function is continuous at that point. That means, beside the existence of partial derivative at a point we must have continuity of partial derivative throughout a disk centered at that point then we can say function is continuous at so, thank you very much.